Hey guys, Insipidus here. The wait is finally over. I'm not going to waste any time, so let's start reading these notes. The long-awaited crossplay is officially here. For console players, it'll be set to on by default. On top of this, Aberration Domination is back, which will increase the rate that you see aberrations throughout the world. This includes an opportunity to gather materials for five brand new weapons, which are the corrupted versions of Twisted Arbalist, Savior, Nebula, Sorrow, and the Cube Gun. This event will run from today, February 29th, to March 5th. There are a few quality of life improvements, including support for FSR 3, support for friend invites for PS5, and an issue with the Gunslinger archetype pre-order bonus that can lock you out of your account. On top of that, the developer states that, while we have a larger balance patch planned for DLC 2, we wanted to make a few adjustments to certain elements to set the stage for the larger patch. While not comprehensive, these changes should provide room for a bit more experimentation before the larger balance patch. Starting with Hunter, they've reduced Hunter's focus ADS requirement from 1 second to 0.5 seconds. And their note is, this means that the player needs to only aim for half a second before the focus bonus is applied. Me personally, this is a big reason why I never actually used it, so I'm excited to test this out. For Challenger, Die Hard now grants one stack of Bulwark while it's unavailable, and War Stomp now deals explosive damage, okay? We wanted to make Die Hard a bit more impactful since it's a prime perk. While having an extra life is great, the 10 minute downtime is very long. Instead of shortening the cooldown, the Challenger becomes tougher until Die Hard's available again. I think that's plenty flavorful, and I like the idea. Medic. No changes. <laughs> what did you expect? Calm down. <laughs> Handler. Pack Hunter no longer requires the companion to be up to grant the bonus. Okay, that's amazing. Pack Hunter now also increases melee damage and melee crit chance. On top of that, companion howl sizes are now affected by aura size increases. The dev states, when the companion went down after taking too much damage, the handler lost all damage bonuses. We now only require the handler to be in range of their companion whether or not they're down. However, you should always try to get your buddy up, because that's the right thing to do. We've also included melee damage to the damage perk to make them a bit more versatile. Couldn't be happier, that's a great change. Gunslinger's getting a huge buff to quick draw. It is getting an extra charge and increasing damage by a whopping 50%. Summoner is being overhauled completely. Dominator gains explosive damage type. Dominator no longer grants a damage increase to range and melee on sacrifice. Dominator now always grants a bonus to mod, skill, and explosive damage. Dev state that we've received much feedback from players wishing to play the summoner as a more minion-focused archetype, so they've removed the damage benefits to ranged and melee, added an explosive damage bonus, which works for sacrifice and all other explosive options, and made them always active. This should give more options for mod, skill, and explosive builds, while leaving ranged and melee to other archetypes. There are potentially more summoner changes in the works. The summoner's prime perk always felt pretty bad to use, but I see they've gone in a completely different direction and I couldn't be happier. Alchemist. Added melee speed and melee charge speed to Frenzy Dust. I thought that was already there. Okay. Added skill reset if Throne Vile does not find the ground after a certain period of time. And enabled Flash Caster and Throw Speed to benefit Vile skills. Engineer. Adds range damage to Metal Worker, which is the damage perk, so you're gonna get an extra 25% range damage at level 10. On top of that, turrets can now critical hit. The dev state, to make Engineer a bit more viable with the turret placed, we've added a damage boost to the Engineer's range damage. It is important to note that the heavy weapon itself is still considered skill damage. This is to benefit their primary and secondary weapon when not brandishing or deploying a heavy weapon. For Arkin, Increase the damage of Chaos Gate from 15% to 50%? What the fuck? Chaos Gate now causes increasing incoming damage by 15%. And it lasts 10 seconds after leaving. Okay, I see now. Also, Power Creep now properly allows mod regeneration while a mod is active. The devs stated that we wanted to buff Chaos Gate while keeping the original design concept. It now grants a noticeable damage buff, but the trade-off is that the incoming damage penalty cannot be avoided by simply leaving the AoE. Players will need to be more careful after obtaining the buff. 50% is insane, so okay, sure. For Invader. Stacks of Shark now fall off one at a time. Okay, that's incredible. Reduce the total duration of Shark to 10 seconds from 15 seconds to balance that out. And now, perfect dodging and evading now instantly grants full stacks of Shark. The dev states that the original shark buff lasted 15 seconds total. There are many cases where it would fall off and require you to start building it all over again, thus making the invader harder to keep active. I couldn't agree more. We changed it so the buffs fall off individually and lowered the individual buff time to 10 seconds. We will monitor the durations and make adjustments where necessary. I love the change. Explorer getting a huge buff by dramatically speeding up the dig animation of Gold Digger. The devs state that it was tricky for many players to get a handful of fountains going during combat, so they basically half the time it takes for one to appear. 
Sweet. A ritualist. Erupt now will deal explosive damage. Deathwish now respects kinship trait again, but doesn't get reduced by armor. Deathwish is absolutely viable now with that. Deathwish no longer kills the player and will instead leave them at one health. Okay, it's extremely viable now. Insane. Moving on to the gear and items. Unfortunately, you're no longer going to be saying I'm bleeding every five seconds while using Atonement Fold. The dev state, while not really a balancing issue, the constant voice callouts were pretty annoying, so we disabled them while wearing the ring. Point Focus Ring. Reduce spread reduction from 35% to 25%. Focusing Jewel. Reduce spread reduction from 35% to 30% and also increased recoil reduction from 25% to 50%. The spread reduction fragment reduces max spread reduction from 30% to 20%, and reduces minimum spread reduction from 3% to 1%. On top of that, Tranquility Fond is reducing spread reduction from 35% to 25%. The devs state that spread reduction was getting out of hand, and it's still incredibly strong. They haven't put a cap on it yet, but they might do that in the future. For now, they've dialed the numbers back a bit, so if you want to turn shotguns into snipers, you'll need to invest a bit more. The feedback mutator can now generate mod power while a mod is active, finally, and reprocessed heart can now generate mod power while a mod is active. For weapons, anguish, fixed weapon scaling to properly cap at 3x instead of 2x. So I think anguish is going to be significantly more powerful. Crescent moon, overcharged shots during moonlight barrage no longer shoot two bolts. I saw that originally as a nerf, but the devs state that total damage potential of the weapon is unchanged. The only difference is that we no longer reward a non-perfect charge. You must hit perfect charge to reach maximum damage. Makes sense. For Twisted Arbalist, Primary Fire now refreshes any current Guardian mark on hit while mod is active. Nebula, Nano Swarm now applies a very small corrosive damage over time. If that means you can stack two different corrosive stacks with just Nebula, that's going to be huge for Tainted Blade builds. For Huntress Spear, we've talked about this before with the Huntress Spear, but they're adding corrosive to it, just like the Huntress has. Along with that, it's also going to get increased projectile speed and charge speed. Spectral Blade. I cannot believe this was never intended and is only getting fixed now, but it will no longer be scaling with the AoE and Aura traits. So Spectral Blade getting a huge nerf, which I think is healthy for the game. We've got a bug fixes. Fix an issue where the MP60 or Chicago typewriter wouldn't spawn in some players' wards. And fix an issue where some players were not receiving credit for acquiring 50,000 scrap. It must be something with an achievement. For archetypes, Ritualist is going to get the most looks here. Fix an issue where Ritualist Wrath perk was not granting increased critical chance. Fix an issue where players could have more than one ragged puppet in their inventory. Fix an issue where Miasma did not function as described. Fix an issue where Eruption did not function as described. So, a lot of broken interactions that are now fixed. For Handler, fix an issue where Support Dog skill was not healing for the correct value. For Alchemist, fix an issue where Thrown Vials failed to enter cooldown if thrown out of bounds in a world. Yeah, they mentioned that earlier, so that's good. Challenger. Fix an issue where Face of Danger was not working as described in the description. Moving on to gear and items. Fix an issue where Sequence Shot Max Value was calculated incorrectly. Another issue was fixed where Atari Booster was sometimes not providing its buff when the player was equipping a heavy weapon. Fix an issue where activating Bloodline mod immediately after applying bleed would result in infinitely reapplying bleed with Merciless. Uh huh. I wish I knew about that. Fix an issue where unequipping Embrace of Shahala would cause all status and buff effects in the UI to no longer work. I didn't know people used that. Fix an issue where Blood Jewel did not scale with the duration. This issue was fixed similarly with Twisted Wounds and Energized Neck Coil. Fix an issue where Detonation Trigger did not work correctly with Eruption. Fix an issue where Compulsion Loop would trigger from Space Crabs mod explosions. So it would essentially consider your Space Crabs as enemies. Fix an issue where Fetid Wounds corrosive damage wasn't affected by weapons level. That is actually my favorite mutator, so that's exciting. Fix an issue where Red Ring of Death was not working correctly with Fire Tornado. Fix an issue where Kill Switch Mutator's damage was reduced when attached to shotguns. Fix an issue where Monarch was incorrectly draining ammo reserves while using Bulletstorm. Fix an issue where Corrupted Meridian was not working with Sequence Shot while wearing Archer's Ring. And fix an issue where Corrupted Meridian was dealing weak spot damage and being affected by damage fall off. I'm happy to see this, and the devs state that, as Corrupted Meridian fires an explosive projectile, it was never meant to behave in this way. Of course, they're referring to the damage fall off, which was pretty evident. Fix an issue where Indaria's Endless Loop would not activate if players took damage while already sprinting. Fix an issue where if you fired a second Soulbinder projectile at the same target, the second one would not refresh the timer and it would expire at the same time as the first. Fix an issue where while Boar and Soulbinder were on the same target, Wormhole damage buff could be consumed. Interesting. Fix an issue where increased casting speed was not affecting Hunter's Mark or Bulletstorm. Fix an issue where Feastmaster's leftovers were not considered unique and it was possible to acquire multiple. You definitely gotta eat up on that one. Fix an issue where Hardcore Metal Band did not function as described. 
Fixed an issue where participation metal did not function as described because it was providing 10% health instead of 10 health. Unfortunate nerf. Get good. Fixed an issue where the all-seeing eye was able to be sold for zero scrap. Not sure why you'd want to do that. Fixed an issue with the Monarch where the chain of command mod was homing back towards the failed harpoon shot. Fix an issue where Overloaded was dealing more than the intended amount of damage. I hope that's the Krell Axe fix we've been waiting for. Fix an issue where Supernova was unaffected by damage boost from Harmonizer. Fix an issue where Weapon Lord buff was not being consumed, and applied default line Shockwave damage on Stonebreaker. Fix an issue where Stone of Malevolence and Fair and Sigil were not functioning as described. So I believe that is a nerf to Stone of Malevolence, if I'm not mistaken. Fix an issue where Reboot was working incorrectly with some item combinations. Fix an issue where Vulcan Turret fires to the right of the reticle when held and when not aiming directly at an enemy. Fix an issue where Windfall Blades were only doing damage when hitting protective plating, explosives, or weak spots. Interesting. Fix an issue where fire damage from Black Tar Grenade was dealing less damage when the player had more status duration bonuses. Fix an issue where Starkiller's reload particle effects could accumulate over time. Fix an issue where Anguish's charge shots had a chance to benefit twice from Bandit Mutator. Fix an issue where Overloaded's AoE explosion fired off every second when it was applied by Ritualist. Fix an issue where the Overload status was dealing reduced damage when spread with the Vile Prime perk. Fix an issue where Overloaded explosions could deal critical damage. The developers state that status effects are not meant to deal critical damage, and I believe, again, that this is a giant fix on the Krell Axe bug. Fix an issue where the Impact Cannon in Heavy Carry Mode would play unintended visual effects when performing a melee attack. Yep, that's true. Fix an issue where Nebula's corrosive damage over time would not end. And fix an issue where AoE damage was not affecting non-combat environmental critters. Moving on to the remainder of the fixes for enemies. They fix an issue where the Root Flyer's projectiles were tracking too much. Fix an issue where the Sunken Witch and Bruin were not playing some of their voice lines. Fix an issue where Generating Band was not working correctly and updated UI to reflect proper behavior. Fix an issue where Ring of Spears was able to be triggered while in a wounded state. Fix an issue where the Pan Brute was not playing death animation if killed while vaulting. Fix an issue where Invincible Root Zombies could spawn in the Legion boss fight. Well, that's not exciting. Fix an issue where Nano Phase Mod could potentially cause the game to crash. The rest of the fixes are UI miscellaneous, so I'll link the patch notes in the description if you'd like to know the remainder of the notes, as they are quite minor. I am beyond excited to hop back into Remnant and start making build videos of the new gear and updated classes. Make sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date with all things Remnant. I'm gonna go play now. See ya.